Hello, my name is Sonali and I welcome you all to the latest episode of Around the World in 7 Days. Former British Prime Minister Lord Palmerston had said, We have neither a permanent ally nor a permanent enemy. Only our interests are permanent and it is our duty to pursue those interests. Today, all the countries of the world are building international relations on this line only. It is the effect of national interest only that sometimes the countries called enemies become friends and sometimes the countries which were staunch allies compete with each other. The way America, Japan and South Korea have come closer to each other in recent times is a testimony to this point. America, which almost destroyed Japan by the world's first nuclear attack and brought it to its knees, is now its very good friends. On the other hand, South Korea, which once fought a long struggle to be free from Japanese colonial barbarism, is improving its relations with Japan. The recently concluded Camp David Summit is a reflection of these strengthening ties between the three countries. In such a situation, the question arises that what are the interests for which these three countries have come together? What effect will be seen on the world order by their coming together? And is it a mini NATO of Northeast Asia as is being alleged by China? We will try to find answers to other such questions through this discussion. So let's start the discussion. The recently concluded Camp David Summit is the first time that the heads of state of the US, Japan and South Korea have held an official joint summit. In such a situation, this summit is special. But this summit becomes more special due to its chosen location, as it has been a place where many historic agreements have been signed. Secret talks between British Prime Minister Winston Churchill and US President Roosevelt took place in 1943 between World War II and Camp David. This place also hosted the 1959 US-Soviet Union meeting, the 1978 Egypt-Israel Accord and the 2000 Palestine-Israel talks. It has also been a witness to historical events. Not only this, in the year 2019, the agreement between America and Taliban was also decided to happen here. In such a situation, analysts believe that by choosing this place, an attempt has been made to show how serious the three countries are about mutual relations. During the summit, the three countries made a commitment to share security-related information, coordinate with each other in case of any threat or crisis. Along with this, the three countries also agreed to start regular trilateral meetings between the ministers of foreign, defense, finance, and industry and national security advisors. The three countries have also agreed to launch an annual trilateral Indo-Pacific dialogue, discuss ways to coordinate counter disinformation efforts, and hold annual multi-domain trilateral exercises on a regular basis. They also agreed to share real-time missile warning data on North Korea and advance enhanced ballistic missile defense cooperation. Analysts are viewing the summit as a reflection of North Korea's growing nuclear arsenal and America's strategic rivalry with China. In the joint statement, the three countries have clearly stated that they stand united for the complete denuclearization of North Korea in accordance with the Security Council resolutions and support a unified Korean peninsula. If seen, the Ukraine war has also prepared the background for this summit. Just as Russia has targeted Ukraine, the possibility of unilateral action by China on Taiwan has also increased. If this happens, then the Northeast Asian countries will have to suffer its effects. Relations between Japan and South Korea are already not good with China. It is said that the enemy of an enemy is a friend, and that is why the growing closeness of Japan-South Korea is also being seen from this point of view. Analysts are also seeing the summit as a sign of America's growing supremacy in the Indo-Pacific. It is believed 
that the way China has established itself as a strategist in the Gulf countries by making an agreement between Saudi Iran, America wants to achieve the same status in the Indo-Pacific region by playing the role of a mediator between Japan and Korea. How important is the coming together of these countries can also be understood from the fact that where China expressed its objection by calling it mini-NATO. Also, shortly after the summit, an informal message was also given by these countries by doing a drill around Taiwan. At the same time, North Korea has already made it clear that it will not hold any formal talks with America or South Korea. But if America's influence in the region increases, it will not hesitate in the use of nuclear weapons. China already has bad relations with Japan and South Korea, while the US and China are pitted against each other in an undeclared Cold War 2.0. The Quad, which includes Japan, India, Australia and the US, is also referred to by China as Asian NATO. China has also expressed its displeasure regarding IPEF, that is Indo-Pacific Economic Framework. And in 2017, when the US and South Korea formally started deploying the Terminal High Altitude Area Defense Missile Defense System, China strongly opposed it. China banned group tours in South Korea, while K-pop concerts and K-drama broadcast in China were also stopped. It is estimated that South Korea's tourism industry lost $24 billion from 2017 to 2019. In such a situation, South Korea had to bow down to China. South Korea also pledged not to deploy third batteries, not to participate in the regional US-led missile defense system, and not to join the trilateral alliance with the US and Japan. However, now through this convention, South Korea has regained on its terms. But this path is not easy, because when South Korea was facing economic crisis due to China's sanctions, America did not extend a helping hand. On the other hand, the division of Korea is the result of the Cold War between the US and the USSR. So how seriously it will take the Cold War between the US and China is not yet clear. Japan and South Korea's economic dependence on China also makes this relationship difficult. Recently, following the path of America, Japan had imposed a comprehensive ban on the rare mineral gallium coming from China. But it is expected to have caused huge damage to its energy and defense sector. There is no doubt that South Korea's leadership will face internal challenges by moving closer to Japan. In such a situation, it is being speculated that as soon as the leadership changes, dark clouds will cover these relations as well. Even so, these countries have not institutionalized their group. At the same time, as it is being called Northeast NATO or Pacific NATO by China. Apart from existing defense treaties binding the US separately to Japan and South Korea, there is no commitment for each side to come to the defense of the other in case of aggression by another country. A large section of South Korea has still not forgotten the brutality and exploitation of Japan. The civil society there wants Japan to apologize for the crimes it has committed on South Korea during the colonial rule, but no formal step has been taken by Japan in this direction. In such a situation, how successful will be the coming together of these three countries only time will tell. So that's all in today's episode. See you in the next episode. But before that, let's note down a question based on today's episode. The coming together of America, Japan and South Korea is the voice of Pacific NATO. Examine.